That's my cubicle there, and this is your cubicle. You are provided a phone. Never answer your phone. Let the voicemail system answer it. There are no personal phone calls allowed. We do, however, allow for emergencies. If you must make an emergency phone call, ask your supervisor first. If you can't find your supervisor, ask Phil Spires who sits over there. He'll check with Clarice and Nick who sits over there. Uh, if you make an emergency phone call without asking, you may be let go. So, you must pace your work. What do I mean? I'm glad you asked that. We pace our work according to the eight hour work day. If you have 12 hours of work in your inbox, for example, you must compress that work into an eight hour day. If you have one hour of work in your inbox, you must expand that to fill a full eight hour day. That was a good question. Feel free to ask questions. Ask too many questions, however, and you may be let go. This is our receptionist. She's a temp. Uh, we go to receptionists here. They quit with alarming frequency. Be polite and civil to the temps. Learn the names and invite them to lunch occasionally. But don't get too close to them, as it always makes it more difficult when they leave. And they always leave. You can be sure of that. So, the next room is here. The women's room is back there. Jan LaFontaine, <laughs> who sits back there, uses the men's room occasionally. She says it's accidental. We know better. But we let it pass. Jan LaFontaine is harmless. She, her forays into the forbidden territory of the men's bathroom is simply a benign thrill. A faint blimp on the dull, flat line of his life. Rochelle Nash, who sits in that cubicle, hi, is in love with Amanda Pierce, who sits in this cubicle. They ride the same bus together after work. For Amanda Pierce, it is a tedious bus drive made less tedious by the idle mattering of Rochelle Nash. But for Rochelle Nash, it is the highlight of her day. It is the highlight of her life. Rochelle Nash has put on 40 pounds and grows fatter with each passing month, nibbling on chips and cookies while peeking glumly over the partitions that Amanda Pierce gorging herself at home on cold pizza and ice cream while watching adult videos on TV. Amanda Pierce has a six-year-old son named Jamie, who is autistic. Her, her cubicle is passed from top to bottom with the boys' crayon artwork, sheet after sheet of precisely drawn concentrated circles and ellipses in black and yellow. <laughs> she rotates them every other Friday. Be sure to comment on them. Amanda Pierce also has a husband who is a lawyer. He subjects her to an, es an escalating array of painful and humiliating sex games to which Amanda Pierce reluctantly submits. She comes to work exhausted and freshly wounded each morning, wincing from the abrasions on her breast or the bruises on her abdomen or the second degree burns on the backs of her thighs. But we're not supposed to know any of this. Do not let on. If you let on, you may be let go. Amanda Pierce, who tolerates Rochelle Nash, is in love with Ali Bosch, whose office is over there. Ali Bosch, who only dimly register registers Amanda Pierce's existence, has eyes only for Ellie Tapper, who sits over here. And Ellie Tapper, who hates Ali Bosch, would walk through fire for Christy Lance. But Christy Lance hates Ellie Tapper. Isn't the world a funny place? Not in the ha-ha sense, of course, but... Anika Bloom is an act cubicle. Last year, all viewing quarter reports in a meeting with Brenda Haggard. Anika Bloom's left palm began to bleed. Um, she fell into a trance and stared into her hand, and Brenda Hacker when and how her husband would die. We laughed it off. She was, after all, a new employee. But when Brenda Hacker's husband died, uh, you know. So unless you want to know exactly when and how you'll die, never talk to Anika Bloom. We also have a generous vacation and sick leave policy. We have an excellent disability insurance plan. We have stable and profitable pension fund. We get group discounts for the symphony and block seating at the ballpark. We get commuter ticket books for the bridge. We have direct deposit. We are all members of Costco. Gwen on Stitch sits in this office here. She is crazy about penguins and collects penguin knickknacks, penguin coasters, and coffee mugs, and stationery, penguin stuffed animals, penguin jewelry, penguin sweaters, and t-shirts and socks. She has a pair of penguin fuzzy slippers that she wears when she's working late at the office. And she has a tape cassette of penguin sounds, which she listens to for relaxation. Um, her favorite colors are black and white. She has personalized license plates that read Penny Gwen. Every morning she passes through all the people who wish each of us a good morning. She brings Danish on Wednesdays for hump day, morning break, and donuts on Fridays for TGIF afternoon break. She organizes the annual Christmas potluck and is in charge of the birthday list. Gwendolyn Stitch's door is always open to all of us. 
she will always lend an ear and put in a good word for you. She'll always give you a hand or the shirt off her back or she'll look to cry on. Kendra Howard sits in that cubicle over there. Uh, she's a serial killer, the one they call the carpet cutter responsible for the media relations across town. We're not supposed to know that, so do not let on. Don't worry. <laughs> Her compulsion inflicts itself on strangers only, and the routine is established and elaborate and unwavering. The victim must be a white male, a young adult, no older than 30, heavy set with dark hair and eyes and to the like. The victim must be chosen at random before sunset from a public place. Uh, the victim is followed home and must put up a struggle, etc. The carnage inflicted is precise. Uh, the angle and direction of the incisions, uh, the layering of skin and muscle tissue, the rearrangement of visual organs, and so on. Kendra Howard does not let any of this interfere with her work, though. She is, in fact, our fastest typist. She types as if she were on fire. <laughs> she has a secret crush on Gwendolyn Stitch and leaves a red foil wrap Hershey's kiss on her desk every afternoon. But she hates Anika Bloom and will keep well away from her. In her presence, she has uncontrollable fits of shaking and trembling. Her left palm does not stop bleeding. In any case, when Kendra Howard gets caught, act surprised. Say that she seemed like a nice person, a bit of a loner perhaps, but always quiet and polite. This is our kitchenette, uh, and that's our curate. We have a coffee pool into which we pay $2 a week for coffee, filter, sugar, and coffee mate. If you prefer Cremora or half and half to coffee mate, there's a special pool for $3 a week. If you prefer sweet and low to sugar, there's a special pool for $2.50 a week. We do not do decaf. You are allowed to join the coffee pool of your choice, but you are not allowed to touch the curate. That's the microwave oven. You are allowed to heat food in the microwave oven. You are not allowed to cook food in the microwave oven. We get one hour for lunch. We also get one 15 minute break in the morning and one 15 minute break in the afternoon. Always take your breaks. If you skip a break, it is gone forever. For your information, your break is a privilege and not a right. If you abuse the break policy, we are authorized to rescind your breaks. Lunch, however, is a right, not a privilege. If you abuse the lunch policy, our hands will be tied and we'll be forced to look the other way. But we will not enjoy that. That's our refrigerator. You may put your lunch in it. Brenda Hacker, who sits right here, steals food from the refrigerator. Her petty theft is an outlet for her grief. Last New Year's Eve, while kissing her wife, a blood vessel burst in her brain. Brenda Hacker's wife was two months pregnant at the time and lingered in a coma for half a year before she died. It was a tragic loss for Brenda Hacker. She hasn't been herself since. Brenda Hacker's wife was a beautiful woman. She was also completely covered. Brenda Hacker did not have to pay one dime, but her dead wife haunts her. She haunts all of us. We have seen her reflected in the monitors of our computers and moving past our cubicles. We have seen the dim shadow of her face in our photocopies. She pencils herself into the receptionist's appointment book with the notation to see Brenda Hacker. She has left messages in the receptionist's voicemail box, messages garbled by the electronic chirps and buzzes in the phone line, her voice echoing from an immense distance with an ambient hum. But the voice is hers, and beneath the voice, beneath the tidal whoosh of static and hiss, the gurgling and crying of a baby can be heard. In any case, if you bring a lunch, put a little something extra in for Brenda Hacker. So this is the end of our tour. If you have any problems, see Rochelle Nash. If you have any questions, ask your supervisor. If you can't find your supervisor, ask Philip Spears. She sits over there. Uh, she'll check with Clarissa Nix. She sits over there. If you can't find them, feel free to ask me. That's my cubicle. I sit in there.